Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how to draw a 2D perspective of a kitchen. Now, on my second channel, I already did similar perspective tutorial to this way back, probably five years ago. And I just wanted to make a quick refresher update to that and also improve the quality of the picture and perhaps show a slightly different variation on the theme of the design. I'm not going to be rendering it in this video, but if you like to see the one that's kind of manually rendered, with markers and pastels, uh, please let me know in the comments and I will see if I can create another tutorial. So enjoy this video. So okay, so for this drawing, I'll be using the 0.7 lead pencil, the rotating drafting setup here with these rulers. Let's start with the horizon line. So I'll start 14 centimeters from the top edge of the page and I will draw a horizon line. And then about two centimeters from the right edge of the paper, I'll leave a mark here and another mark 25 centimeters away from the first mark. These are going to be the two edges of the picture frame. Then from this outermost edge, I'll set the nine centimeter point here. This is going to be our vanishing point. And let's say 22 centimeters from the vanishing point, I'll have my depth point here. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this picture frame and distance between vanishing point and the distance point the same. So these two are the same. And then I'll draw an increment seven centimeters up from the horizon line. And then 15 centimeters down, another point from the first point, one line here, and another one here, these two lines here. And there you go, that's a picture frame. The logic for this uh, picture frame is that every five centimeters is going to represent one meter. So I'll split five meters this way. So one, two, three, four, five, and three meters up. One, two, three, vertically as well. Next, what we're gonna do is we want to trace these edges of the picture frame towards the vanishing point like so. So you see how we have increments this way, increments upwards, five meters this way, three meters this way. We also want to set increments towards the vanishing point. And the way you do that is you use the depth point to subdivide the depth. What you want to be basically doing, you want to pull from the one of these subdivisions towards the dimension line. And then finally, the last point here, so you can see one, two, three, four, five meters towards the depth point. And let's define the end wall. So my end wall is actually gonna end at four meter distance and it will make sense why as I progress. So there you have it, this is our room. The boundary at the back, the boundary at the front. I wanna draw a grid on the ground by connecting all of these increments together in a grid. So now you have this matrix on the ground here. So first of all, let's draw our kitchen countertop starting here. I want to subdivide this square so that I get the halfway point because from this halfway point, I'll be setting my kitchen countertop, beginning of my kitchen countertop like so. And then kitchen countertops are usually 600 mil. So because I know that my one meter is split into five equal chunks. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's basically 60 centimeters for the depth. Pulling it towards vanishing point like so. And similarly at the end, what I wanna do is I wanna split one of these squares at the back in two so I know where the middle point is. That's roughly here. And here I'm not gonna bother uh, having it at 600. I'll just leave them at half a meter. Maybe I'll just draw slightly. Maybe I'll just draw this line slightly under it so that it's kind of accurate but the purpose of this drawing or the purpose of all these hand drawings is that it doesn't have to be perfect like if you if I really wanted to make it super accurate I would just use a computer software that's a half an increment as well from here to here just for our circulation or like a space to walk around this is gonna be an island unit and this is gonna be a counter and I'm just gonna color these in so that you can see a bit better okay so then in terms of height, the same principle applies. So if I want to have my countertops to be 900 high or tall, then I just have to mark one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine increments up, project it to the opposite wall here. And then from that pull towards the vanishing point, 
So now what I can do is I can just pull these up, pull the edges up, so you can see it's kind of like extruding in SketchUp or AutoCAD or whatever. Same kind of principle, we extrude up. I'll catch this island unit as well whilst I'm at it, because it's just economy of time. by using a ruler several times. Like that. And then here, at this point of intersection where my counter is, just draw a line across. And that gives me face from which I can pull towards the vanishing point, like so. Find where it intersects with the newly extruded part. Connect it. Do the same for the back. You can see that the back touches the, the corner of a room. Pull it towards here, like that. And then it's these two points that also will be connected together like that. So that L unit at the back is drawn. Now the same, we should do the same with this unit. Now this obviously doesn't have a wall against which we can set this off. But what we can do is we can, from this point here, because it's one to one, what we can do, we can just pull up single line like so. A lot of lines here on the drawing now, but just remember that we're, we're pulling this line, not that line, not that line, but this one here. And do the same, find the crossing, and then that crossing, then if it projects towards the vanishing point. I could have done this from the middle of this point, but I chose to just follow, you know, the original increment. So here what we have to do is to find the top of this counter, maybe a bit convoluted, but you'll get the point in a second. We'll just pull it up and that's that's basically our height, that's it, that's it there. And then all you need to do after that is connect. Connect these, find where the edges of the countertop is, and then from these edges, pull towards the vanishing point. And this is actually quite interestingly connects itself to the the edges of the room where it kind of projects it forwards. So that's an accidental coincidence, basically. Now we want to also have the upper bits here as well. So for that, what I can do is I can once more I'll split this face in half. Because our depth for the counters are is 600, the depth for the units above is usually 300. It's half of the 600. Pull up from here and pull up from there. And then again, what I want to do is I want to set 50 centimeter difference between distance between the top of the counter and the underside of the shelves. So one, two, three, four, five, and then the height of the shelf is 90. Pull back again and now here it was quite easy to figure out the depth here it's a bit harder there so um, I'll draw a line between these two edges the further co corner and then this is the closer corner and I'll pull from the vanishing points towards this I can say with certainty that that's where the middle point is for the for the counter and that's important when I turn the corner this is the back wall I'm pulling forward and again on the other side so that's our kind of back of the counter. And then for the depth, just connect these two together. So we have a face of our upper shelves. And then see here where we've projected our middle point on, this, on the top of this counter. You can then pull it up and then where it intersects with these two lines, that's where we're gonna get our edge. And the same here, just kind of following the geometry of the shape and then here it's a bit again tricky to see because it's so so tiny but what I'm doing is basically I'm pulling from vanishing points to, towards the back corner so towards the back corner and out so that I can find my edge and it'll be like a millimeter but that's okay um, it doesn't have to be super precise and at this point I also want to just indicate where the back wall is or where it ends rather and then pull that from the vanishing point upwards. And then I wanna have a half a meter height for it because I thought that that could look quite nice as a spatial experience where you have a ceiling on different levels and pull it towards there. So 2.5 from here to here, which equals half a meter. So this is kind of the front of the room. I also wanna create like a backdrop behind. So this last increment, you remember we had four meters depth, the fifth meter will be just a straight line like that. And we'll just project it up, or rather we'll project the back of the room up. 
and we'll project this bit up as well so that what I want to achieve here is I want to have the room kind of being taller at this end than it is on the um, on the kitchen end because I think it's nicer to have kitchen smaller you know floor to ceiling height and then this bit here that's going to be our uh, kind of path through the house taller so you can see the ceiling kind of steps up and then the back here pull this up here like that and intersect it with the vanishing point we want to also step this ceiling at the back the same way we have it in the front so that's why i cannot just have this line continuing upward i need to pull it up by half a meter and the way i did it is i extended this new corner line at the ceiling this one's the old one this is the new one I extended it up and then i connected it with the back here with that one meter with the last one meter up and i get the corner that way so if i just pull the line across it then becomes its true height there so this ceiling here you can see all this surface here that's higher than all of this surface there and then also what you can see is because it's not bound by the edge here that means that there's a passage through that last meter is basically like a passage that's like a corridor through through the house to the back and there might be a staircase behind and maybe there's an exit or um, like a, a foyer area that way so now what I want to do is I want to split these in two subdivide them basically again pull towards the vanishing point and stop at this line here that ground line and like that now is we can pull window lines up these are going to be the mullions kind of finely spaced out and then what i'll do is i'll simply whilst i'm at this there's also one that's going to continue from that point there it's very close to the to the edge of the wall and so whilst i'm at it i might as well just add a little bit of depth to them i'll just pull one millimeter to the left and this one as well and maybe one millimeter from the top here and the bottom as well I also want to put some shelving on this side. What I'll do first is I'm going to define the middle point. So you can see here I'm just pulling diagonals from one bit to another. Then if I pull the halfway point to vanishing point, I can have these nice middle increments. And then I want to drag them across here so that I basically divide each of these one meter increments by half. And then without moving this roller, put the triangle on top move these up to about here what well, would be quite cool if the top of these shelves would align with the top of this lower seal so that's the old ceiling height i can still see the traces of that line on my drawing and what i want to do probably is also split this into half meter increments so 2.5 centimeters I'll give these shelves a depth of about 300. I'm pulling beyond the picture frame, but that makes no difference because these axes here, they're all one-to-one -one scale, so it's fine to do that. And then this is gonna be our depth for the shelves. And then I'm just gonna gently pull them towards the vanishing point. And then try to not get too confused by this and connect each of these together. I kind of want to have a little bit of thickness to these as well. This is all by eye by the way, so because I think it would be ridiculous to try to figure out the actual thickness. So I'll start with 2 millimeter distance here and 1.5 here maybe, then 1.5 here again, one on this line, one on this line, again one, and maybe half a millimeter on the very last line. So we have that like nice kind of perspective shortening. Okay. And similarly, what I'll do is I'll put two centimeter, two millimeters uh, here, which I'll put there as well. Now here you can see actually that these lines that I've created previously are no longer valid. It's actually these points that we need to pull from, and these points as well. Kind of lighten this up a little bit, trying not to smudge it too much. 
don't really need this anymore. So now I want to subdivide these units, these kitchen units. So to do that, I'm just going to be pulling half a meter increments towards it. We have this already figured out as a half meter point in this area. So I can just pull it towards there. I can then quickly draw a middle point for that section, which will be somewhere here. And then pull it towards countertops. And similarly at the back. Just the same principle applies really. That was the corner of our counter there. Just make this thicker so it's a bit more pronounced in front here. Similarly there. Now, I think these are about 200 mil. The slidey bits out, I <laughs> don't know how they're called, but I think they're 200 mil. And then I also want to give a little bit of depth to my counter. Kind of eyeballing it a little bit there. It's thick enough to see it behind the island unit. And I also want it to kind of terminate at the edge here to go down like so. So if we know that this is 200, it's going to be roughly 200 or 150 mil here for the little inset at the bottom so that, you know, when you mop, you have that little bit that doesn't get caught um, and get, can, can be cleaned um, easily. And then again, kind of eyeball the depth of the countertop a little bit. If I just find like a middle point for this, pull it towards here and towards there. And so like a nice little inset to put our chairs in. And then little hack for these ones. I'm not gonna repeat what I've done with the countertop. So I just use calculator to divide it in six increments. So it's about 1.2 each. Then here I'll do a slightly different approach and subdivide this into six identical pieces. So what I'll be doing, this is a little trick I learned. If I pick this edge against the edge, this bottom increment, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. What I need to do is I need to sort of like make it so that this line here, from this edge to that counter edge, and again, do the same here. From this point here, the furthermost point, to the counter edge, and then pull. And that, that's basically gonna be, this is a bit, maybe feels random, but what it does is like, you can divide that any line in perspective like that. You just have to find the endpoints of that line, which is at an angle, and then draw another line at an angle. In this case, I don't have to do it because I have this, this thing here that I can use to set my increments along. So I have all of them equal, six, and then what I should be able to do now, if I pull them up, I should be able to divide this line into equal chunks, but also make it so that it kind of goes towards the vanishing point. Again, some part of it is highly dependent on how accurate you are with your rulers. Not being too precious, so some of these finer ones might not work 100%, but it kind of sort of looks like it's going towards the vanishing point, so I'll leave it there. And then lastly, let's put some chairs onto this. So I probably want my chairs to be probably one three. So now I kind of know that this here is roughly half meter by half meter. And I know that the chairs should be about 40 centimeters in diameter, like a bar chairs, that's approximately. For this side here, I can put, I can put roughly two centimeter mark to have it so that uh, my chair is actually 40 centimeters. So that each of these is two centimeters, which equals 40 centimeters in real life. And then because these are supposedly like a squares, right? So we can we can just draw a diagonal and where that diagonal intersects with these edges, that's where we kind of know where the edge of the stool is. So pull these towards. So again, what I did there is I kind of 
pulled had these original increments and what I did is I figured you know these this is where my 20 millimeters equals 40 centimeters and then if I draw a diagonal like this where these are intersecting because this is a square I know that if I then project lines further what's gonna happen is that this little cube should be 40 by 40 centimeters lastly we'll just need to pull these up I think roughly the height of these is about 70 80 centimeters for ease what I'll do is I'll just pull up the edges of these chairs and from here where remember we started pulling them up this is one to one so I know if I pull up 75 centimeter increment so one two three four five six seven eight so let's say 75 this here is gonna be oh it's coincidentally again lines up with the line at the back of the room that's great i'll just use that for reference instead then and erase these redundant lines no longer need these construction lines and then the same with the back line just just the same way we did with the with the counter i use the chance whilst i have the ruler set up against this to pull actually all of these back lines up i just need to pull one of them towards the vanishing point like so And then I, I want to put like one of these leg uh, thingies where you hold your legs against sort of maybe like here this sort of level give it a little bit of thickness maybe a cent a millimeter up because these are metal so they're quite fine let's give some thickness to the chair legs and similarly here at the back and lastly I want to add some lamps to the ceiling like a spotlight probably and I want to have them kind of following this line between the worktops and I probably want like one two three I want three lines so I'll take one and a half centimeters away the edge you create that little spotlight you can raise this line now maybe we'll have a feature lamp over here middle of that last bay So now all that's left is to trace this with a fine liner. This. So at this stage there are a couple of choices how to finish this drawing. Um, one would be to scan it in in the Photoshop, clean it up a little bit, print it out and trace it over, or even trace it in the Photoshop using a pen brush. Um, alternatively what we can do, we can use a tracing paper, kind of line weight paper that's translucent, or in my case I'll be using this paper here. I don't think it's the ideal uh, solution, It's um, I think it's called layout paper, and kind of this like really thin wide paper that you can barely see through but I don't have any tracing paper so I will use this instead and you might also if you want you can align the second sheet so it's so that the drawing is in the middle of the composition I have this tool here so I'll just be clipping it inside and I can scan that in later and you know if I need to post do post production I can do that but um, I'm not gonna center it but if you want you can do that to achieve nicer central composition so for this i'll be using the 0.2 fine liner and i'll just do a time lapse on this because i think it's self-evident what i'm doing
think I'll just outline some of the distinctive features of this room in 0.3 size uh, fine liner. Okay, and I think I'll just stop there. I could uh, scan it in and put it through Photoshop, put some shadows, highlights, um, or do it manually uh, with a pen and some pastel colors. Um, for this drawing, I'll leave it as it is. Um, let me know in the comments if you like to see a drawing that's uh, rendered manually or in Photoshop, and I might make a video on that. So that's the tutorial guys, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, leave a like if you did, subscribe for the more upcoming videos, there's a link here somewhere to the original video on my second YouTube channel, and if you want to check that out, I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.